Hey there, it's Mandy from Mandy Marie Art. I am so excited to swatch the T-Rex Alcohol Ink Cool Earth Tones for you today. If you're new to T-Rex inks, let me tell you a little bit about them. They are a fiercely vibrant Japanese dye based ink, perfect for use on non-porous surfaces. They can be used in painting, fabric dyeing, jewelry making, stamping, epoxy, resin, you name it. So the artistic possibilities are endless with these inks. They're 100% acid free and permanent. They clean up with alcohol, have rewetting properties, and can be thinned for transparency. You can use them on glossy paper, glass, stone, leather, ceramic, vinyl, plastic, foil, wood, polymer clay. I prefer to use them on UVO paper, wood blocks, and primed canvas, but the options again are endless. T-Rex sells their inks in packs of 12 and currently have three sets available. They have a starter pack, a warm earth tones pack, and a cool earth tones pack. Each bottle in the pack contains 20 milliliters of ink, which let me tell you is a lot of ink. Their bottles are anti-clogging and leak resistant, and the ink is incredibly brilliant in color. The Cool Earth Tones pack has some serious punch. So let's dig in. All right, first up is Lemongrass. I'm using a bit of the clear blending solution from T-Rex to blend the colors. As the name implies, I would consider this to be just a lemongrass color. Um, there's a little bit of yellow, a goldenrod yellow that'll bleed out for undertones. And then deep in the green, some aqua. So if you're familiar with their starter pack, you'll know that Irish moss kind of has some of that similarity. So um, very similar to Irish moss in terms of the undertones and just even almost the overall look of the color as well. Similar to that Irish moss. Next up is Kelp Forest. Kelp Forest is similar to Jurassic Green, which is in the original pack, but different in that it's a bit lighter, has a bit more olive to it, so indicating that there would be more yellow in it. Um, you don't see as much of the yellow bleeding out. There's just a tiny bit around the edges and a tiny bit of the aqua, but not much. Next is Olive Grove. Very rich olive color. Some aqua showing through along the edges. It kind of has like a brownish yellow to it. Not as much yellow as the lemongrass color, but just a little bit in there. And again, a little bit of aqua, but not much. It's a pretty stable olive which is nice because not a lot of the alcoholing colors on the market for all of us are as stable as this color. So pretty stable. I would, looking at the texture, this one would be a buildable option if you want some of that gumminess. Next up is sea glass. Sea glass does remind me of something that I would find along the beach. That lovely soft blue is kind of bleeding out on the side. There's a little bit of yellow in there. Some really great green with a lot of aqua kind of underneath it. It's a really pretty color. Next is Island Teal. I love a good teal jewel tone. This one does not disappoint. 
It's a little more dull than Tidal Teal, so um, has kind of more of a muddy, dull, gray kind of feel to it. Not much in terms of undertones, maybe just a little yellow kind of showing through there, but overall pretty stable color, not super gummy. Yeah, all right. Argan C is next, oh, Egan C. I didn't read that correctly, Egan C. All right, so next is Egan C. It's a really lovely blue. Lots of rich richness towards this, the edges there. Definitely a buildable option that could get gummy, you know, as you start to build it up. Maybe just a tiny bit of purple red that could bleed through on it, but most likely you wouldn't see it very often. Um, it's just slightly along that edge there that it's a little kind of like lavender looking, um, but overall just a really pretty shade there. Pacific Blue is next. This one has some lavender undertones for sure that kind of are there right away initially. Really rich color though, very nice, kind of strong navy color, but again, some of that purpley pink showing through for undertones there. Okay, next is Monsoon. This one is more of a dull blue, um, so it kind of has that gray feel to it, like a cloudy storm. Not much in terms of undertones or bleeding as much. There's maybe just a little more of like that gray green kind of showing up along the edges, but it's very subtle. So not a lot in terms of colors bleeding out there for Monsoon. Next is Purple Iris. Now right away I can see the aqua underneath and the pink undertones. So the pink bleeding out. So the aqua will stain the paper and the pink will be what bleeds out along the edges. It's a, it's a deeper purple. Reminds me a little of how Cool Perry from Ranger performs, if you're familiar with the Ranger inks at all. Um, but again, just some of those aqua undertones, pink along the edges. Next color is Wisteria. Seeing a lot of a soft kind of rosy pink coming through there. So for undertones, it'd kind of be a little bit of the rosy pink. It dissipates. So overall, it's a pretty stable color, but just some of that rosy pink. Again, not too noticeable there. And then Volcanic Ash. Now, if you like to work with grays, this gray has a lot of green undertones to it. Really lovely color. Okay, and then I'm going to sample some of the the star um, the starlight silver. So you can kind of see, beads up really well in terms of a metallic. I'm adding a little bit of the blending solution and I'm just gonna move this metallic around. 
So for a metallic, this almost has like a pearlescent feel to it. Um, so not like um, the pinata metallics from J Card. It just performs a little differently. So this is just on its own, that silver metallic there. Next, I'm just gonna slide this sheet down here and I'm going to use Pacific Blue and the Starlight Silver together along with some blending solution. So I'm just putting some of that Pacific Blue down followed by a drop of the Starlight Silver and a little bit of blending solution just so that we can see kind of how this is performing. So if you like to add metallic in with your inks, go ahead and add a little bit more of the blue. And so it really, the silver kind of becomes a part of the blue ink. Turns it into more of, again, kind of like a shimmery pearl essence. It doesn't necessarily spread and build up along the side. It's just all kind of spread throughout. So here's a close up of, again, the starlight silver mixed in with the Pacific blue. You can see it just kind of created more of like a pearlescent color in the ink. All right, one last look at the cool earth tones from T-Rex inks. There are some amazing jewel tone colors in this pack. I happen to love working with blues, purples, and grays, so I know I'll be using this pack quite a bit. I've provided links below for additional resources, and if you liked this video and want to learn more about alcohol ink resources for painting, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below and you'll be notified the second I upload a new video. So that's it from me. Let's meet up again.